Hi, I'm Jeff Mucklin, and this is Science at Home, which is brought to you by the Nurture Nature Center. In this week's episode, we are going to be talking about the amazing science behind fall color. And in this video, there's going to be a lot of shots like this one. Uh, and I'd like to just take a moment to appreciate the incredible beauty that we are witness to every fall as our green landscapes turn to red and gold. Uh, our appreciation of a scene like this is actually enhanced by an understanding of the science that makes it possible. Due to the Earth's 23 degree tilt, as it orbits around the Sun, the northern and southern hemispheres of the Earth experience varying amounts of daylight. Here we're looking at the Earth during the fall equinox, and at this time the northern hemisphere, which we're looking at now, uh, and the southern hemisphere, which we are looking at now, uh, experience roughly equal amounts of daylight. Uh, as the seasons progress, as we go into fall, uh, the amount of light falling on the northern hemisphere uh, decreases, while at the same time in the southern hemisphere, there's actually more and more light falling on the southern half of the Earth. But as the Earth's tilt causes the northern hemisphere to experience uh, less and less direct uh, sunlight, the daylight hours get shorter and the temperatures begin to drop. These changes cause some animals to migrate, a topic we discussed in a previous video. Um, for plants, the only response possible is to go into a period of dormancy over the winter months. Not all plants do this. Uh, many produce seeds and then die in the winter. But for the plants that do go dormant over the winter, there is a period of transition that leads to the beauty of fall. I am inspired by the vibrant colors of an autumn forest. I love going out onto hiking trails to experience them. Now this transformation is uh, triggered by changes in light levels, as we saw in the sphere, not by changes in temperature. Uh, however, uh, there are many factors at play that can affect the timing and intensity of fall color. A warmer and wetter than average growing season is going to produce more foliage, and hence a fuller canopy of colorful leaves in the fall, for example. The most critical time of year seems to be the late summer into early fall. If the weather in this time period is mostly warm sunny days and cool clear nights, then the red and crimson colors are likely to be more vibrant. Very strong winds in the fall can cause leaves, uh, trees to drop their leaves prematurely before they reach peak color. Typically, uh, we experience peak color in, uh, here in the Lehigh Valley in late October into early November. Uh, but the timing can change from year to year, and it's best to check a peak color forecast map like this one uh, while planning a fall color trip. You might be wondering why leaves change color at all. Now, plants, uh, including both the trees uh, towering above my head and these understory uh, herbaceous plants down here, uh, get their energy through photosynthesis. When a tree is actively performing photosynthesis, it needs water, uh, which it gets from its roots, and uh, carbon dioxide, which it pulls in from its leaves, from the atmosphere around it. Using en the energy in sunlight, chemical processes in the leaf split carbon from CO2 and hydrogen from H2O, or water. This produces hydrocarbon molecules in the form of sugar, which fuels the plant's growth. By the way, a byproduct of all of this is oxygen gas, which animals like us need to breathe to, for our metabolic processes. As light levels drop off in the fall, trees begin to stop producing chlorophyll, which is a molecule that enables photosynthesis. Trees have to produce it all through the growing season. When they stop producing it in the fall, it breaks down and is not replaced. This allows the tree to conserve nutrients that it will need in the spring when it begins to grow again. Leaves also have a uh, very high surface area, uh, which is necessary so that the pores within the leaf can absorb sufficient amounts of carbon dioxide. But it also allows a lot of water to leave through the leaves of a tree. In the summer, roots can replace the water that is lost through leaves. But in the winter, when the air is particularly dry, this is not enough. So to prevent the tree from drying out, the, a wall of cells grows at the base of each leaf 
uh, stem and the leaf eventually breaks from the tree along this sealed wall of cells. The change in color is a consequence of the process that we just described and I have a model of a leaf that explains this. Right now uh, it is green because I've filled it with a green liquid. This represents the chlorophyll in a leaf during the growing season. Chlorophyll is a green pigment and it is why leaves appear green. Uh, as the leaf stops producing chlorophyll, it begins to break down until there's none left, which I can simulate uh, by emptying the liquid into this jar. And as I do that, uh, we can see the other colors that were present in the leaf the whole time. But now it appears predominantly yellow because the green liquid is out of the way. Now the color a leaf takes on after the chlorophyll is broken down depends on the chemical makeup of the leaf. Uh, for example, for some species uh, with a lot of flavanol, uh, they will appear yellow. Flavanol is a yellow molecule that seems to help protect a leaf from uh, UV radiation. This is a wonderful example. It's also present in egg yolks and it gives them their distinctive yellow color. Other species have more of a molecule called beta carotene in them, and that makes them look orange when the chlorophyll is gone. Uh, carotene is present in carrots, uh, and it is the source of their orange hue. As the leaf breaks down even further, the flavanol and carotene might fade away, revealing brown tannins, like we see in uh, these leaves here. Uh, tannin is a very tough molecule seen in the cell walls of many plants, and so it tends to be the last color present in a leaf when all other colors have disappeared. And of course, for some plants, they go straight from green to brown. Uh, tannins are responsible for the brown of a nice cup of coffee. So the color that we see uh, in the fall is actually present in a leaf year-round. It just becomes present when the green chlorophyll disappears. This is true for all of the colors except for, uh, for leaves that turn some shade between purple to red. That comes from a molecule that is not present in the leaf year-round. Anthocyan is present in some plants all the time, uh, and it gives some of them a purple color in the case of uh, plums or purple cabbage. Uh, and uh, it can give some plants a reddish color, as in the case of cranberries, which are also rich in anthocyan. Now, anthocyan is not normally present in many tree leaves, and it only forms in some species in the fall. The bright, sunny days that we talked about before help to contribute to the production of lots of anthocyan in a leaf. Uh, and there's plenty of anthocyan in these maple leaves, for example. Anthocyan is responsible for a range of color because anthocyan itself can change color depending on the acidity of the leaf that it's in. In this jar here, I have liquid that I got from purple cabbage. Uh, and you can see that the liquid itself is purple. And that's because uh, the anthocyan in this liquid is an environment that is neither acidic or basic. Uh, and that allows it to be purple. But if we uh, put some of this purple liquid into these uh, beakers here and add acids and bases, we can actually get it to change color just like it does inside of a leaf. So here I've got my anthocyan in a beaker and it appears uh, very dark purple. Uh, and if I just take some bleach, which is a very strong base, and I add uh, a little bit, notice it's clear, if I add a little bit of it to the anthocyan, the solution becomes uh, a weak base. So now it's, it's green. And if I add uh, even more, uh, it becomes a very strong base and it becomes yellow. So I've got more anthocyan here, some fresh anthocyan, and I'm going to add acid in the form of vinegar uh, and let's see what color it turns. And yeah, as you, you can see, it's a sort of a pinkish color. If I add even more of the acid, it becomes a distinctly red. In the spring, flowers bloom and they produce lovely spots of color. But in the fall, the entire forest seems to bloom and briefly fill our world with color. In the Northeast United States, we are treated to some of the most spectacular fall colors seen anywhere in the world. So go out and check them out with somebody you care about. And thanks for watching.